Hello, welcome to Scott's Odyssey. This is a quick little tour of some more Coke ovens located close to the railroading hotspot of central Pennsylvania, right by Horseshoe Curve. Welcome to the Glen White Coke ovens. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, I hope this episode gives you more knowledge of the history behind the Glen White Coke ovens. If you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. And please take a moment to click subscribe for more of this journey through odd to see stories of who we once were. It costs you nothing but a click and it'll give you continuous adventures in return. In 1880, the Glen White Coal and Lumber Company of Baltimore had obtained rights to a portion of land a mile north of what would later become the Bennington Village. This location had a series of coal mines and over 80 coke ovens with a production of 662 tons of coke per week. The operation was so large with over 140 men that the company built housing and created the town of Glen White directly across the road. The Glen White Coal and Lumber Company owned an engine and a railroad two miles long that connected with the main line of the Pennsylvania Railroad near Kittatinning Point, five miles west of Altoona. Like most places in this part of Pennsylvania, we have a ghost attached to this particular site. Let me know in the comments below if you have stories or information regarding the town of Glen White or the ghost. Tell me your family's stories or if you know about other aspects of Glen White that I didn't mention in this video. My research is limited only by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history and culture of who we once were. And we will continue along. This goes quite the distance. That looks like a hole that just wants to be crawled into. Let's take a look and see what we got going on here. Let's see if we can't lighten that up a little bit. This one required light because the hole at the top appears to be covered and sealed. As you can see, these particular Coke ovens and they go on for quite a distance. This one has completely caved in and filled in. Oh, there we go. The original face. That's just beautiful. Looks like somebody's tried to do a little bit of repair in order to keep the history going. And, you know, people... Hey, kids come back here and they do their trash. Very nice. Nothing left of that one. What they probably did was took the rocks from the one to repair the others as best that they could in order to try and preserve what they originally looked like. Because here's your facade. And these are the holes that the people worked at. And it was behind that stone wall where all those stones probably got repurposed that you actually had your beehive. Let's go into this guy. Hello in there. Do we have any friends, any visitors? Let's get that light adjusted. Oh. 
On Wednesday, April 27, 1910, at about 5.20 a.m., Edward Burns, a 22-year-old former employee of Glen White Company, was on his way to quit his job as a worker for the Carruthers Construction Company at Lake Altoona. While walking along the tracks to his destination, Edward Burns was run down by the Glen White engine and killed. Local lore has it that at 5.20 a.m. you may still see Edward walking along the Glen White Road, still on his way to quit his job with the Carruthers Company. In 1932, the Coke oven saw their final blast. The mines that opened in 1880 continued to operate until they finally closed down in 1940. All that's left are the Coke ovens and a series of tailings or slurry water waste pools scattered behind this location. Oh, we've got a tree growing right through it. Oh, well, here's a nice one. It's about nine feet. And here comes that snow rain again. Made it to the other side. And these are significantly more interesting. The wall textures changed and the stacked blocks. Let's continue on. Trying to be as safe as possible. Look at that walls. That is so, so cool. a lot of labor too. I wonder if they ran out of stone and made these or if they made these and then started using the other type of quarry stone around here that was more readily available. And they keep going. I would say this is better part of a quarter of a mile, almost a half a mile. I'll be able to judge that when I drive the truck by. Oh, I think I see an end in sight. If we could find a way to it. <laughs> I got to go back down this hill to get to there in order to get back to that road. That's going to be interesting because it is wet out here. Here's a fun little piece of fungus. It is an atypical carving fungus, but it's got moss on both sides. And these guys, you normally find them attached to a tree. We're gonna put them back, let nature do its thing. Alrighty. We got past that area. Is this the end of the Glen White Coke ovens? Survey says. Survey says that this is just beautiful. Like some type of fantasy art of a time long ago. All right. Crossing another tree. And this is it. This is the end of the Cokes. Beautiful.